In this video, I want to look at challenge problems for the properties of exponents, specifically when we have integer exponents. So our exponents can be whole numbers, either positive, negative, or even zero. And let's just start looking at these problems and develop strategies for each individual problem type. So this first one asks, which expressions are equivalent to 5 to the 12th times by 5 to the 8th? So we have 5 to the 12th multiplied by 5 to the 8th, and we need to choose two different answers that this is equivalent to. So we have two different exponential expressions where they have the same base but different exponents. So if you're ever not sure about exponent properties, I recommend just looking at simpler examples. So let's say instead that we had 2 to the third times 2 squared. So smaller numbers. And remember what each of these expressions means using basic principles. So 2 to the third is really just 2 multiplied 3 times. And 2 squared is really just 2 multiplied twice. And notice there are 5 of these 2's now multiplied together. And so we can generalize this property. It is true that when you have x to the a multiplied by x to the b, that when the base is the same and you're multiplying, you're going to add the exponents. So in our example, really, we had 2 to the 3 plus 2, which is 2 to the fifth. And so we'll apply that same logic here. They have the same base, so we're just going to add the exponents. So this is 5 to the 12 plus 8 power, which is really 5 to the 20th power. So this is our simplified answer. And now we want to go through each of the answers and see if they make sense. And you can see the first one doesn't make sense because this is 25 to the 20th power, which is considerably larger. In fact, one way you can rewrite this is 5 squared to the 20th power. And we also know that when you raise an exponent to an exponent, you multiply. So we'll need that property as well. So let me go through that since we'll need it for a later one. And if we had in our example, let's again use smaller numbers. Let's say 3 squared, and we are going to cube that. So remember what it means to have 3 squared. That's just 3 let me rewrite that. That's just 3 times 3. And now we're going to cube that. So we're going to multiply it 3 times. So 3 times 3. And we do it 2 more times. So that now you can see there are 6 of these. So this is really 3 to the 6th. Or the pattern we want to recognize is that when you have an exponent to an exponent, you can multiply the two exponents. So this is 3 to the 6th. You could write this generally as well. Let me just make just a bit more room there. And so if you had x to the a all raised to the b power, this is really just x to the a times b. And so we could apply that property here. 5 squared to the 20th is really just 5 to the 40th, which is quite different than what we have. In fact, there's an extra 25s multiplied together in this expression. And likewise, this one, an exponent to an exponent, you can multiply. So this is 25 to the 20th. But we already know that's not going to be correct since that's equal to 5 to the 40th. So process of elimination tells us it has to be C and D. But let's make sure those actually make sense. And for this one, notice you have two exponent expressions with the same base. And so we can add the exponents. So on the inside, we have 5 to the 3 plus 2, which is just 5 to the 5th. All that's raised to the 4th power. And continuing this, an exponent to an exponent, we're going to multiply. And so 5 times 4 is 20, so this is really 5 to the 20th, which is what we expected, since that's what we originally started with, and we knew these had to be correct from process of elimination. And likewise, you have the same scenario here. 5 to the 5th, then raised to the 4th, so you multiply those exponents. So that's really 5 to the 5 times 4, which again is just 5 to the 20th power. So these did make sense when we went through and actually checked them, rather than just relying on eliminating the first two. 
So with that in mind, let's look at some other examples. And in this one, we're going to need to find the mistake in Chris's work. So we try to rewrite this expression, 4 to the minus 2 times 4 to the minus 3, all cubed. And if he did make a mistake, we need to figure out which step it is. So let's work this out ourselves. We have 4 to the minus 2 times 4 to the minus 3. We have two expressions with the same base, so we can add the exponents. And minus 2 plus minus 3 is just minus 5. And now we have an exponent to an exponent, so we multiply. And minus 5 times 3 is really minus 15. And so you can interpret this as dividing by 4 15 times, since negative exponents are really just repeated division. So if you wanted, you could rewrite this as 1 over 4 to the 15th, but it really just depends how the answer needs to be expressed. So now going back through each of these steps, let's see where the mistake was made. You can see the first step makes sense because we had the same thing here. You added the exponents and they became 4 to the minus 5, all cubed. And then in step 2, well, that's where the mistake occurs. Since when you have an exponent to an exponent, you're supposed to multiply these and you should get minus 15. But it looks like Chris added these and made it minus 2. But that would not make sense from basic principles. And at that point, it doesn't really matter going forward. But it is true that 4 to the minus 2 is 1 over 4 squared. So step 3, you can double check. There wasn't a mistake going from this wrong answer and then just simplifying it. So for this problem, you would have multiple choice and select that step 2 is where the mistake was made.